Welcome to the Middle Room Workshop. Today I'm going to review the new Creality Falcon 2 Laser Engraver 22 Watt. Without further ado, let's get into it. This is the new industrial grade desktop laser engraver with a pleasing and functional design, built in air assist and offline controller, and the most exciting part of it is the high tech laser module. Now, before getting any further, a quick note, I received this machine free of charge with a request to review it. However, I'm not being paid by Creality, neither any one of its affiliate. And as usual, I like to keep my video reviews unbiased. Therefore, all of the opinion that I'm about to share in this video, they represent my honest opinion about this product. And as such, I'm going to also tell you what I like, what I don't like, and what I think it should be improved. As usual, I break down my video reviews into different sections so that I can try and cover most aspects of these machines. Um, if you like, have a look to the timeline below and jump to the section of your interest as you please. Starting with the assembly, the machine comes pretty much assembled and ready to go. All you need to do is to install the laser module, plug in the connector, the hose and the legs. All the wiring and the hoses are tightly pre-routed and it literally takes no more than 10 to 15 minutes from opening the box to launching your first engraving. Now the machine has a slick minimalistic design with a futuristic appearance and a gray color makes it look more elegant. The frame is entirely custom designed with proprietary profiles and railings and is very stiff and squared out of the box. Plus the extendable and adjustable leg supports allow you to work longer sheets passing through from all the directions. Now the machine comes with a bunch of features, starting with a built-in air assist with an onboard control and a variable flow rate which allow you to make clean cuts from your first project. The pump is a typical pump, however, uh, it comes built in air filter, which is something that I haven't seen in other pumps just yet. And it's both quiet and effective. Then a simple to use offline controller, which allows you to work offline with an SD card without a physical connection. All you need is to save a G-code file to the SD card, then use the keypad on the front of the machine to frame and start your project. The machine has a bi-directional limit switches, which means that you get limit switches on the both ends of the axis. Therefore, the axis cannot crash into the frame. And finally, you get a bunch of safety features, including the fire protection, which is built into the laser module, tilt protection, an emergency button, and a locale switch. Now, the machine comes with a highly sophisticated quad diode 22 baht laser module, with what Creality calls a triple monitoring system which basically provides indication about air assist, fire protection, and lens condition. This is by far the most sophisticated uh, laser module I've reviewed on this channel so far. The LEDs do exactly what you'd expect. The air LED turns red if there is no airflow, orange for a weak flow, and green for a good flow. Similarly, for the lens condition, very dirty, dirty, and clean. And finally, the fire detection, and you will see the information on the right side of the laser module. The module has a different design compared to other laser modules in the market, and because of the fan configuration, which do not funnel toward the center, it requires a very low flow rate air assist to avoid getting uh, the lens dirt. Now, fortunately for us, this is done automatically by the machine, so every layer that is set without air assist, the machine knows that has to tag along air assist at very low flow rate. The module mounts on a sliding clamp with two bolts and the adjustment is straightforward and pretty standard. The cool thing with, that is provided with the machine is a stepped clearance plate, uh, which takes in, into account the material thickness. Now this is cool because you would normally want to lower down the laser module uh, the thicker the material is. And so all you need to do is to load your material, place the clearance plate in line with the proper step, loosen the laser, lower it down, tighten it up, and you're good to go. As for the accessories, the machine comes with a few testing pieces, a set of leg extension, which should come handy when you're using the rotary jig, and a nicely arranged tool and repair kit with a spare lens. Let's now get into the capabilities. As usual, I run my testing to assess the performance of the machine using the material that I use the most. And for the testing, I run the machine 
with the air from the machine provided air pump so that you know exactly what to expect. Going ahead with the testing, cutting three millimeters or one eighth of an inch birch playwood cleanly at 500 millimeters per minute, 90% in power. You could go as fast as 550, even 600 millimeters per minute. However, you will end up with stringing on the back side, which will basically leave your part with a rough edge. Therefore, I would conservatively go no more than 500 millimeters per minute, 95% in power, or even drop down at 450 millimeters per minute for a good consistent result each single time. I couldn't find a three millimeters MDF in my local supplier this time. Therefore, I've decided to go ahead with HDF, which is a higher density material. Now, the result on a three millimeters HDF were good at 500 millimeters per minute, 90% in power, with rougher results at 600 millimeters per minute. 3.2 millimeters acrylic, one pass at 300 millimeters per minute, 90% power. The engraving here came out a little bit dirty, therefore I suggest you peel off the protection before the engraving. 1.5 mm ABS, a single pass at 1,100 mm per minute, 90% in power. I also tried some thick cartoon, uh, the material used in food packaging, but about 3, 3.5 mm in thickness, and I was able to go through at 500 mm per minute and higher at 90% in power. As for the maximum depth, setting the height to the lowest clearance step, I was able to go through 27 millimeters pine wood in three passes at 100 millimeters per minute, 100% power. A single pass with the same parameter goes through 17 millimeters of material. For the engraving performance, I noticed that the machine is quite powerful. In fact, you see in my testing, which I do before everything, that the text come out deep and smooth, despite going as fast as 4,000 millimeters per minute, 70% in power. And you can actually see the performance on the various material. Now, on birch playwood, as you see, produces good results all the way up to 18,000 millimeters per minute. So you simply need to choose the color tone you like and to go for it. Now, I noticed that there isn't much difference in the tone beyond the 8,000 millimeters per minute mark. If there is, it's not noticeable. I did not measure the actual physical speed of the laser module, therefore I cannot say with certainty whether the physical speed corresponds to the set speed. However, the machine clearly speeds up all the way up uh, to the 18,000 row. I will investigate this further, however, this should not affect the engraving performance. I also then tried engraving MDF and it was able to produce visible results all the way up to almost machine top speed of 24,000 millimeters per minute which is very good for a diet laser. I then tackle some real projects with Playwood and they turn out good enough. You need to adjust the flow rate of the pump to find the sweet spot in order to get perfectly clean cuts. But overall, the performance is great, both cutting and engravings were good and consistent from the first to the last project without any signs of power drops. I was hoping for the lines to get dirty uh, in the meantime, to see the sensor in action. However, despite a few hours of operation, the lens was pretty clean, which obviously did not trigger the sensor. This, however, gave me the opportunity to find out how easy it is to clean the lens, as all you need to do is to unscrew the nozzle. All right, let me now tell you what I like, what I don't like, and what I think it should be improved. Starting with the pros, the machine has a cool design, which makes it look more like a machine for the year 2023, and we finally see a USB Type-C connector instead of the traditional one. Built-in air assist and an included variable flow air pump with filter. Then the module is powerful and at the same time intelligent and should make your life much easier in operation. The machine is quiet and the fans do not run while idling. The machine is built in offline controller, which is very easy to use. Now, something that I think it should be improved, the offline controller does not allow you to choose a file from your SD card, therefore you are limited to a project at a time. Another thing is the fan, which kicks in as soon as you jog your frame, and also the air pump, which kicks in as soon as you frame. Now, I believe this is a necessary and it can be easily solved with an update. All right, let me now tell you what I don't like. Well, I couldn't find something that bothers me, and I think that at the moment nothing affects the machine negatively. The only thing that I could list out as a negative is the power connector. 
power connector is non-traditional, which means that even if you have other 24 volts machine laying around, you are forced to have this extra power connector in order to work with this machine. Now, of course, this applies only to people that already own another 24 volt uh, laser engraver, uh, but it's a pity thing that, you know, they went with the USB type C for data, which is a universal connector. And finally they ended up swapping the power connector for something that is uh, absolutely no standard. Let me now tell you whether you should buy it, consider it or discard it. Now, considering the pros and the cons that I have discussed, especially the ease of use, the performance, the ability to work longer shit and the look of it, and also some of the features, uh, including the air pump and the offline controller, plus the price, which right now is around $750. I think that I would definitely throw it in the cart. All right. And this is pretty much all. Now, I hope you found this video informative, helpful. If you liked it, click the thumb up button below and do not forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this one. Ciao for now.